it's now been about 13 years, close to 13 years, since I've been involved in the subject of Sasquatch. I was basically thrust into this with uh, initial close vocal encounter, which um, was back on October 25th, 2008. And since that time, I've come a long way. I've kept an open mind the entire time. You have to. You know, there's, uh, there's some real closed minds involved in this subject. And that includes organizations uh, that um, adhere in, to this uh, flesh and blood only, which is absolutely ridiculous at this point. Um, and I'll get a little more into that in a bit. Um, so my, like my initial close vocal encounter was in one of the most unlikely of places. I, I, I couldn't believe um, when it happened. Uh, but, you know, at that time, I was willing to go there, meet up with somebody and and see what happened. And, uh, you know, just uh, things happened. And and I heard a, a triple guttural whoop call that was uh, so loud it filled the forest and a very raspy uh, tone to it. And I, I remember even at the time I, I thought um, or after, you know, afterthought that it sounded like it could speak English. Little did I know. Um, I've learned so much since then. And uh, almost a decade now has been ongoing with uh, Sasquatch contact experiences. They show up in my life and I've learned they can show up anywhere, basically. I mean anywhere. And I've had uh, their activity and their presence shown in, in places that is just you know ridiculous to, to talk about. To about you know to talk to people about some of the things that have gone on, um, but uh, at this point I you know I'm basically spoiled with uh, contact activity and experiences that have really given me an insight um, uh, that has just allowed me to understand a lot more about reality, our true reality. And instead of you know what's portrayed to us or what's taught to us, um, I've learned to look far outside that. And at this point, um, you know, I I I hope this continues for the rest of my life. I'm just talking. I'm sharing experiences that, um, you know, I I've been put through the gamut of ridicule and slander and stalking and harassment and. It just doesn't stop, right? It's um, it's it's lessened at this point over the years, but it's still going on. The stalking's still going on, and um, but we're getting much closer to catching uh, some of these people that have been uh, stalking uh, uh, Dwayne and myself over the years. Uh, I did catch a BFRO member on site at one point. I have you know I have that proof, and I actually learned that. Uh, the BFRO organization, they're basically, their entire database is fraudulent. It's corrupt, it's fraudulent, they have an inside uh, group who wipe reports clean of any paranormal activity. And when you get close enough uh, to the Sasquatch, when you experience their true presence, it's paranormal. You know, for the most part, people have sightings all the time and and people hear vocals and but when you have ongoing, continued contact, um, it might not even be ongoing or uh, it just when they show up close in your presence, it tends to be very paranormal. Um, some people might be in their tent or whatever, maybe get a finger poking in the side of the tent wall or something like that. And that, you know, that doesn't seem paranormal, but hey, maybe you stick your head out outside the tent and look and there's nothing there. Um, I've learned they can do things that, uh, like, I, I understand their invisibility because I've had physical contact so many times at this point. I just, I don't count, right? It's happened both indoors and out many times. Um, I've been witness to uh, mainly marbles out of thin air so many times. It's a normal part of my existence. And... It barely phases me at this point. They even had the one, uh, or I had the, uh, actually it was two. Uh, but the first time they did it, I think it was about, took eight years. I think it was about eight years. And it was at arm's length and they held 
or push this marble through empty space, basically at arm's length, right in front of my face. They knew where I was looking at the time. And this happened indoors. So it didn't happen fast. It actually pushed through empty space very slowly and deliberately, uh, purposefully, uh, purposely for me to witness. And I remember I had audio running and captured my my reaction at the time. It was it was extremely mind blowing. Um, I, I just want to show you a. A couple of things from uh, corresponding with uh, uh, Dmitry uh, Benov, who's no longer with us. He passed a heart failure. Um, I, I can't remember the exact date. Uh, a couple years back now, I think. And uh, he was the director of science for the Darwin State Museum in Moscow and had been involved in this subject since 1964. I just want to show you a few uh, correspondence uh, emails between us that that shows the mentality of some of the folks involved in this subject. You know, that he, you know, he was getting uh, letters, emails, whatever, from um, some folks involved in this subject, basically trying to tear me down, right? Hoax accusations and all this. And if you think I'm going to spend um, the last almost decade making visits to a specific area, documenting activity, that uh, has brought much, much supporting evidence. You think this is some joke or some hoax bullshit, then uh, you know, maybe uh, your observation skills need some fine tuning because uh, I'm, I am the least, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the type of person who doesn't like bullshit at all. I tell it just like it is, zero embellishment. This is how I am. Um, and it's, uh, you know, the, the time that I've spent putting this stuff out there, it's, uh, you can go through all my stuff and comments and posts and the, you know, you see the emotional roller coaster ride I've been put through over the years. Um, you know, I've definitely grown in this as uh, the years have passed. I'm at a much more uh, comfortable point right now um, after uh, just, you know, growing a thicker skin after so many years of this stuff. When you put out the real stuff, the truth of Sasquatch, you get, um, you get a lot of crap thrown at you. And you'll, you'll see in one of these emails, uh, Dimitri basically uh, used the term Bigfoot gate you know, as a uh, massive cover-up. And, and this is, the, there's a cover-up. You know, it's, it's a no-brainer. Science cannot ignore how many sightings have been ongoing over the years. And for me, it's easy to see why there's a cover-up because uh, there's a much bigger connection. We're dealing with, um, they're not animals. They are human types. They are highly telepathic. You know, they can speak loud and clear in your head. And, and uh, I remember the first time it happened to me back in 2013, I was basically asleep on the couch and they give me a big loud grunt. It was so loud. It just, I shot to my feet so fast and I was on the phone to Dwayne and uh, just mind blowing. And I've had other incidents since then and, and different ways of um, how they have presented their, their uh, telepathic abilities. Um, you know, it's not just mind speak. There's uh, images and uh uh, feelings and um, they, they have a, a full understanding of earth energy and, and how to use that. You know, when you break, um, when you break it down to a quantum level, it's basically empty space. So they know how to move through basically walls that um, we consider uh, walls they're not walls they're empty space and they know how to move through that to the point they're you know they can come visit us inside our homes and they do i've talked to many people over the years and i get quite often often enough people um, confiding in me and and they trust me because they know i'm speaking the real stuff because they're experiencing it too and um I get told stories that, uh, and it's funny because they say you're the only person I will tell I will tell this to because I get it. Um, I've just been putting this stuff out for for long enough to uh, uh, for people to um, understand that this is this is the real stuff. This 
eight mentality that so many cling on to. Why? Why do you not keep an open mind? Because really, you know nothing about them. Until you have ongoing contact, you don't know anything about Sasquatch, except they exist and they leave footprints and they vocalize and this and that. Until you experience um, ongoing contact, maybe it doesn't even have to be ongoing, until you experience their, their, uh, their firsthand presence where they give you something, they allow you to know of their presence. You, you see that they are um, the epitome of don't judge a book by its cover. They are very evolved in their conscious um, understanding of energy and, and so much more. They are, um, they're bigger, they're faster, they're, they're wiser. Uh, you know, like I said, don't judge them because they're living in the woods and covered in hair. Um, they're far more evolved than humans and they've been here longer than humans from what I've been told. And I'm at this level where I've been asking questions and getting written answers and drawings. And I actually asked recently about cancer. Um, does, uh, is there specific uh, sound frequencies that kill cancer cells? And they, re they responded, yes. Um, I've asked quite a few questions um, over, over the years, and at this point it's, uh, it's really developed. They, they completely understand the context I'm talking about. You know, I've gotten um, their ages uh, of a couple of them, which gives me an indication of uh, other certain family members. Um, when I see a footprint size, you know, I can sort of judge roughly, uh, guesstimate what, what their um, age would be. Um, and so I, I just want to mention too, like these organizations, uh, like the BFRO, personally, I think they're disinformation organization at this point because they completely deny the paranormal factor. They wipe their reports clean, um, which was given by uh, one of their insiders, one of their members uh, who put it out in a recent publication. You know, I'm not going to give names because I don't want to get anybody in trouble, right? Um, he didn't mention the BFRO specifically in his book, but he's talking about the BFRO. Um, this organization, they, they stalk people, they harass, they slander. Um, again, I, I'm sitting on quite a bit of uh, supporting evidence, um, proof of, you know, their members are um, infiltrating the location where I've done a lot of work. I was also at one point um, invited out to a, a property which is uh, basically uh, northeast, um, be north of Kingston, north of Belleville area. And a couple had invited me out there because uh, they have uh, activity going on their property. And they were pretty freaked out, you know, not knowing if uh, there's, you know, if they were going to be harmed or something like that. And another organization was called in that they thought was myself. And I am completely opposite of what they do. These people went in um, with loaded, loaded weapons and basically fear mongering, pushing fear. You know, they're going to kill your dogs. They're going to kill your chickens. They're going to um, just complete fear. And I think there was uh, one, two, three, four, f four or five of them that went in there and they don't know what they're dealing with. Um, I've been shown over the past uh, uh, 13 years or so that um, uh, the Sasquatch are very uh, benevolent, um, very compassionate and loving beings when you really get to know who they are. And there is a lot of humor involved um, and so these people that are going in bringing in weapons and setting up traps of whatever sort, um, you're, you're most likely being watched and they just laugh at you thinking, you know, stupid humans trying to trick them. You're not going to trick them. It's just not going to happen. They're a hell of a lot more, um, on the ball than, than we are at this point. I trust them fully. And uh, Anyone who has contact with them, it's a baby step process. 
And still after a decade, I have not had a close-up visual yet. You know, there's been glimpses here and there, and, and they've even um, been witnessed standing behind me in partial form where, where I've felt them poke me in the side, that sort of thing. And, um, it, you know, sometimes I see uh, people will make a comment, why, why haven't I gotten this? Why haven't I gotten that at this point? It's been so long. Tell me, what do you know about them? What do you really understand about them? They are, um, they have the patience of a rock. They will sit there and wait and wait or, and give these just little baby step indications. And, and they tend to always give something new, even though it may seem like a small thing at the time. It's, um, it really is a, when you ponder it and you sit there and contemplate about what happened, they, um, you get to see that, wow, you know, they, they showed this and, or they showed that. Um, it's, uh, they're not in any rush, um, although perhaps they should be, you know, with the way things are going on right now in this world. They know what's going on, and they are feared by the dark side because we cannot hide secrets from them. Their t telepathic abilities allow them to know secrets that humans, um, bad humans, are hiding from the rest of us, basically. Because I've asked specific questions, and some of the responses I'm getting are um, just out of this world, just unbelievable. There's some really dark stuff going on, on this planet, and we've, we've been under this rule by uh, these uh, dark forces that are basically governing the entire globe, and and the stuff's going on right now. It's it's absolutely incredible how many people are blind to it. It just blows my mind, uh, you know, that people can't see. Um, it's uh, to me, it's just blatantly obvious. And um, you know, anybody that questions the science these days is shot down as a conspiracy a conspiracy theorist. But uh, that's what science is. You know, you question it. It's uh, it's an ongoing evolving theory. It's uh, always question the science. You know, we're uh, being brainwashed to think otherwise. Um, but anyways, I, I want to mention too, so when I went to, uh, you know, I digress, when I went to visit these folks and basically confirm they, they did indeed have activity going on, um, uh, you know, I run my audio recorders, right? They actually, as I was zipping up my tent to get in into my, uh, or getting in my tent for the remainder of the night, um, I was talking out loud to them, and and you hear a stick snap as I'm zipping up. I didn't hear that at the time. I hear it on the playback, which um, happens with a lot of stuff. It's funny how they always know. You know, you scuff your foot, they might do a vocal or something like that. It's just. Their timing is always impeccable. It's absolutely amazing how th how um, their timing is just uh, you know you you might hear something and then you'll question it. This is you know a good reason why why to run audio and and uh, I listen to so much of that stuff on playback. Um, but uh, in the morning, um, these folks you know they have some uh, livestock on their property and I was woken up by uh, roosters and or a rooster and and um, what's funny is I've never recorded uh, rooster calls in uh, other location that I visit so I'm gonna let you hear this uh, it's it's a few minutes five minute piece of audio and you can basically hear one of the young going off like a rooster which was just absolutely hilarious because it was uh, very shortly after when i made that visit and i start recording rooster calls um basically showing me that hey we know you were there and um these uh, you, you can listen in between there's there's uh, rooster calls and there's roars and then at one point the the rooster type calls are much closer you know roosters don't fly and um you know, there's a couple of vocalizations in there that sound a little, they give it away, basically. Um, my ears have been fine-tuned to this stuff, so, uh, you know, after so many years of dealing with this. And then I think at the end there's uh, some moans going on in the background, and I've recorded those same sounds, uh, you know, among the coyotes, too, which, you know, it's all... Uh, 
it's Sasquatch presence. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, give you a bit of an update and show you uh, some of the stuff, uh, the correspondence that I did with Dimitri. And he was very supportive, as was John Bindernagel over the years. Um, sadly, at one point, this was years back, I got a bit paranoid and I wiped out all, all my emails uh, corresponding with John, you know, because just thinking about being hacked and stuff. And uh, although I still have some, um, you know, from after the fact. But John was very supportive as well, and, and people were squawking in his ear too, you know. Um, he would use my, uh, some of my evidence in his presentations, and, and he quit using my name, and he, um, you know, he told me basically because uh, uh, of the flack he was getting. Um, there are people involved in this subject who apparently do not want this truth coming out, and I understand why. I can see why. This breaks the system. It breaks the status quo. Once people understand our reality is not as it seems to be, um, that we have... Uh, oh, I asked the Sasquatch, too, about... Um, uh, they, they told me that uh, some humans have their DNA. So that makes them our ancestors, basically the missing link. Um, they are our true ancestors. They are human types. They're not fully human. They're not homo sapien, but they are human types. And um, they're going to have to rewrite the books when all this comes out. And science, mainstream science isn't going to like this. And I put this out because I don't like this system. I can't stand it. It's just all manipulation, lies, control. It's, it's a dark system created to fail for the vast majority of us. You know, we got um, people in power, just psychotic people in power who, uh, you know, they, they don't have anything, uh, any good intentions towards us, that's for sure. So I do this because I do not like this system. This truth of Sasquatch breaks the system. Not going to happen in my lifetime, probably. You know, I don't think. But um, got to get the ball rolling at some point, right? Uh, it was uh, both Dimitri and John had always. Uh, they'd mentioned a couple times to me to tone it down about the, the paranormal part of things that we have to first prove their existence and and. Me being the defiant person I am against uh, the system and authority and all that stuff. And I've always been that way. I remember years back, my mom said to me, Michael, you've always had a problem with authority. And I said, yes, mom, and I always will. Um, now I understand why even more so, uh, you know, why I am like I am. And... You know, I'm just, I'm just a truth seeker. I just want this truth to come out, like I said, because I know it breaks the system. It opens up and expands human consciousness. And once that happens, people see what's really going on with the totalitarian regime and power who uh, um, basically are destroying this earth. And um, they really don't like us. They hate us. So this um, truth of Sasquatch, um, they're afraid of. They're afraid of them. They want them wiped out, and they've told me this. I, the hairy folk, you know, I've asked this question about, um, you know, do they want us all dead? And they wrote same as us, um, same as then them, meaning, you know, they want them wiped out too because they are a massive threat because they are, they are truth. You know, from my experience, they do not lie, and they're very, um, very laid back and humorous and loving, compassionate. Uh, um, a lot of people get uh, scary encounters, and it's understandable because it can be very scary at times, especially when you don't understand, um, you know, who they are and what they're about. They are um, so connected to the earth, unlike anything else we know, and their abilities basically uh, just shatter this paradigm. And Sasquatch truth will bring us into a new paradigm, and 
you know I'm just uh, putting out my experiences and sharing what I have learned to uh, you know help bring this truth out because uh, I just want to uh, you know do what's right and um, I'm about the earth and making things better um, not uh, not for uh, you know anything other than just it's the right thing to do Thank you.